Hello, and welcome to Southern California CEO Magazine. I'm Dwight Cromie. On this very special edition, we hear from Brad Hudson, City Manager for the City of Riverside. Mr. Hudson spoke to a group of over 250 regional business leaders at the Greater Riverside Chambers of Commerce Good Morning Riverside event. He talked about how the governor's plan to take redevelopment dollars away from local control will affect communities statewide. In his presentation, he demonstrates how vital these redevelopment dollars are to the local economy, businesses, and the community. So let's talk about the governor's budget real quick. It's really the same old thing. Uh, there's, I mean, you can go back to Duke Machen and forward every governor since then, and they've used the same tricks to avoid having to do the real thing, which is actually cut. And so here you go. Spending really is unchanged. They're spending about $100 billion. Now, they can move it around and, and use some gaming money and tobacco and maybe steal a little transportation, take some local government money, maybe make the county do a few things. At the end of the day, things are still the same. Staffing levels, as best I can tell, are at uh, an all-time high. When I'm looking at the number of state workers over the net last three or four years, it's really increased from about 340,000 to 365,000. More state workers than ever. How long has a state had a 20 plus billion dollar deficit? I don't know. Since most of us were born, probably. It's been a long time. Why have they continued to add employees and grow when they have these continual deficits? We couldn't do that. Our general fund employees have been reduced by 18%. And across the state, virtually every city and county has responded to smaller budgets by reducing the workforce. The state has not. Again, a lot of the same tricks, loans and transfer, a lot of loans in this, transfers, uh, has a lot of new in, uh, or increases in, in taxes, really keeping existing sales taxes, the 1%, uh, vehicle taxes, keeping them high, and a lot of uh, new stuff, especially for, guess who? the business community. And so, uh, again, I talked about local shifts. And then, you know, we asked them in November to not do two things. Don't touch our transportation money and don't touch redevelopment. Voters approved Prop 22 by a huge margin. And what's the first thing this governor does when he gets in office? He steals a little transportation money and is attempting to steal redevelopment. So we think what he's doing is, is illegal and it's certainly inappropriate and we're going to fight him at every, every step of the way. But we would like you to be with us. And so I want to show you a couple things about redevelopment. You're going to hear, and it's interesting, you know, I'm pretty good at this. I've been doing this a long time. If I want to kill a program, I'd find out some bad stuff about it first and then I'd get it out and then I'd kill it. That's the proper way. Not here. The governor said, oh, we're going to kill it. Oh, we better find out some bad stuff about it. So they, you heard about the audits they're doing of the 18 select redevelopment agencies. That's to gather that information uh, to justify the decision that's already been made. I, I place no, no merit in that whatsoever. But redevelopment dollars we use to create jobs, eliminate blight, we fight crime. Uh, one of the best tools we have for improving property values in distressed areas. We build a lot of community projects. That's most of what these resources go for. Uh, we provide affordable housing, and it's really the only tool uh, for historic preservation, which is incredibly important for our community. When I go through these projects, you'll see there's not a, we didn't build a de auto dealership where there's no Costco out there that we paid for. There's none of that sort of thing that you're going to hear about. It's simply not true. So let me go through a few of these things. Well, let me tell you how much money we get. Over the last 10 years, we've gotten about $450 million. Of that, about $250 million has gone towards community projects. Um, the schools and the counties got another almost $100 million, and then we spent about $40 million on housing, and uh, we actually we have shifted to the state, uh, which basically is a nice way of saying they stole from us uh, 21 million dollars, including 17 million last year, right on the heels of a proposition that said another proposition that said don't take our money. It was because of the theft of redevelopment last year that we put Prop 22 on the ballot to hopefully stop uh, additional uh, thefts of local dollars. Anyway, so I want you to kind of get a picture 
of the sort of things that we do with this money. And obviously, community revitalization is one of the most important things we do. And I don't know if anybody remembers this. This is before my time. This is what the Riverside Marketplace used to look like. Uh, abandoned, dilapidated structures, uh, contamination, uh, just really an eyesore immediately adjacent to our downtown. And then today, you see restored historic structures, uh, new businesses, vitality, and of course the Metrolink Center as well. So it's, it's really transformed this area into really about the worst place in town to a much nicer place. Uh, the Riverside Plaza could not have been redone without redevelopment. There are multiple ownerships, a lot of complexities. Redevelopment was needed to, to come in and, and bring some sanity and order to this development. Uh, there wasn't a bunch of money involved. That's not what we provided. We provided other tools to, to get people to work together for a project that I think is one of the best uh, in our city. University Village. Again, many people won't remember what it used to look like there with the old hotel and the abandoned auto lots and, and other things. It was really about the worst thing we could do to a really great university is to put that on their doorstep. And it is greatly improved now with businesses, with housing, with a lot of activity there, far superior to what used to be there. The Galleria, another one where not a lot of redevelopment money involved, but a lot of effort in terms of bringing people together for a common purpose and a common development on a piece of land. And as you'll see later, we also provided some infrastructure around a improved uh, Hughes Alley and, and, and Tyler and other aspects of that, but, but no big check to a greedy developer. There's no corporate welfare here in Riverside. Uh, Arlington Village beautification, Again, if you remember what this looked like five or six years ago and you can see what the, the city and the agency have done in, par in partnership with the, uh, the Arlington uh, bid, it's really a transformation. Uh, Arlington has never looked better. We're just getting going on five points. Most of the public art in town is agency uh, uh, initiated. Uh, the Fox Entertainment Plaza, again, the old auto dealerships next door. The, the old homeless mission that was in the back and some of the abandoned stuff, all put together by the redevelopment agency for what's going to be, I think, one of the most iconic projects uh, in Riverside with the black box theater and the muse museum exhibit area and all the wonderful things, uh, restaurants and shops that are going to accommodate uh, Fox guests and others for a really uh, interesting entertainment experience. Uh, Rain Cross Promenade, this is great, a great uh, example of redevelopment where we had uh, abandoned structures, uh, inappropriate land uses, uh, and then you had toxic contamination, and we've come in, and you have, now you have a wonderful uh, project there. One of the biggest things we do in redevelopment is environmental cleanup. Riverside is an old city. Uh, there were a lot of substances handled here in uh, an insensitive way for many, many years. Not that you know, we just didn't know better at the time. Now we know better, but the cost of remediating these kind of sites is far in excess, what the, in excess of what the private sector can absorb. And so somebody has to come in, clean this up, and then sell it at market value so that development can occur. And the agency is really the only one that can do that. The Fox Performing Arts Center, again, was misstated in the paper. The, the agency didn't pay for the Fox. The agency acquired the Fox from the private owner, and then the city actually paid for the improvements there. But I want to make that clear. Uh, we're just getting ready to start, and you'll see the scaffolding going up very shortly on the Metropolitan Museum uh, as we seismically retrofit that and make that iconic facility available to generations in the future by preserving it today. The city could never afford to do that, only the agency really has the resources to do that sort of thing. The Municipal Auditorium, a similar situation. That should go out to bid very shortly for uh, uh, seismic stabilization and restoration of that facility. That's a redevelopment project. This very building uh, is probably the recipient of a variety of efforts by the redevelopment agency, probably in excess of $20 million the agency has put into this facility over many, many years.